The megapixel count race is still on, it seems, with our camera sensors. This is the Samsung HP1 200 megapixel sensor with an f1.69 aperture lens. In this here, the new Xiaomi 12T Pro. The 12T Pro also has an 8 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel macro camera. Yay, <laughs> you know how I feel about those. And a front 20 megapixel camera, which is a cutout, hole punch style. And it's a flat AMOLED screen that does have a peak brightness of 900 nits. It also does support HDR10 plus and 120 hertz refresh rate, along with 480 hertz touch sampling rate. So really good screen on this phone and screen fingerprint reader. Sound from Harman Kardon, dual speakers. 120 watt fast charging, incredibly quick. It just takes under 20 minutes to fully charge this phone. It's all powered by the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which is Qualcomm's latest and greatest with improved CPU and GPU performance. It's more efficient and the battery life should be a little bit better here. It does have a large 5,000 milliamp hour battery powering it all. Plastic frame around the outside, frosted anti-smudge, anti-fingerprint glass on the rear of it. Gorilla Glass 5 is covering the front. Included with the 12T Pro, you will find quick start guide, warranty card, safety information, our 120 watt charger. It's a little larger than normal, but it charges the phone in record times. It's under 20 minutes. I'll give you the exact times later on in this video. Type A to type C cable. There's a SIM tray tool, which is off camera, and then a clear TPU case. The 12T Pro has this anti-glare glass backing on it. Now I've noticed it does tend to pick up fingerprints a little bit because of the matte coating it has on it. Now it does feel good in hand. We have, however, a plastic frame around the outside of this phone. So when you're holding it, it doesn't feel quite as good as the 12 Pro or the 12 series. So here we have our volume up and down power button, which is in a good position. You can easily get to it there, which I do like. Now it has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery within it. So it's a little heavy, 205 grams. And the thickness is almost nine millimeters right here and about 13 with the camera module there, as you can see, sticks out a little bit. Now with our cameras, this is the first time I will be testing out this new 200 megapixel sensor. It's got an F 1.69 aperture. And yet again, we see this eight megapixel ultra wide and a two megapixel macro camera with such a spec. It's truly a disappointment to me. I think they need to just ditch this and give us a very decent ultra wide instead of those two. Say a 13 megapixel with autofocus or 16 megapixel with a good lens in it would be a little bit better. Dual tone LED flash. So this main camera does have optical image stabilization. Up the top we have an infrared transmitter there, secondary mic, loudspeaker, so they are still tuned by Harman Kardon, which is good to see, they're keeping with that partnership there. Our Type-C port does not support video out and it's USB 2 speeds. This needs to be fixed. I hope that one day Xiaomi will correct this. SIM tray takes two nano SIMs, our mic, and then the downwards firing loudspeaker. The screen is a 6.67 inch 120 hertz AMOLED screen. It's flat, really do like this. And the fingerprint reader located a little low for my liking. I think it should be about here, but hey, that's where it is. And you see unlock speed here does not seem to be too bad. I'll do that one more time for you. So it's reasonably quick. It's probably the animation that's making it look a little slower than what it really is. It seems to work every single time for me and I've only added my thumb once. I haven't added it a few times. Now just the ones there and it seems to be working well. So up the top here, you can see we've got a cutout for our front facing camera, 20 megapixels again, and it does not support 4K video. Unfortunately, they just don't seem to want to add that, do they, Xiaomi? So it is a nice screen, good resolution. It's almost 1440p, the resolution. So 27, 12 by 1220. So a little shy of 1440, but it's a little bit sharper than normal and up to 900 nits peak brightness, HDR10 support too with it. The touch sampling rate with the screen is 480 hertz, which is higher than normal than what you normally see. A lot of the times it'll be 240 or 360. I'll just show you some real world images. So touch response is very good. It is, I find, quite accurate with the touch and I really haven't had any issues with it. You can see blacks are looking very deep there because it's an AMOLED screen. I love the fact that it is flat 
and it's got that HDR support and also Dolby Vision. Now just go quickly here into our settings with display and just show some of the options here that we do have. So you see, got the typical ones there. Now the refresh rate, I've set it to 120 hertz. That's the way I like to run it. If I'm buying a phone or I have a phone that supports it, I'm gonna run that. But there is no, unfortunately, sweet spot of 90 hertz here, which I do like to see on other manufacturers. They do actually offer this. And I hope that with the firmware update, Xiaomi could offer us 90. It's that perfect combination of fluidity and a little bit of battery saving if you did happen to want that, of course. So you can adjust the colors here under color scheme there. I've got it on the default, which is vivid, but the original color does actually look a lot more correct to me. You've got adaptive color options there, uh, blue light, of course, and lots of other things that can be tweaked, including the scaling and the font size. And briefly, a little bit on the UI. So MIUI 13 running Android 12. My version here has eight gigabytes of RAM. And of course, it's the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, their latest and greatest. Now performance, 120 hertz, very good. Everything's smooth, it's fast. Touch response, as I mentioned just before, is working really well. Multitasking is good. And I haven't noticed the task manager being too aggressive with things. So when I go into any of those apps there, they should actually, okay, that's reloading, but that has been in the background for quite some time. But normally it's pretty good. You can swap over those apps without noticing uh, them having to reload themselves. Now they do that, of course, to kill them off for battery saving, but it is good. And I have found really that there are no bugs. I haven't really seen any loading lag or glitches, which can often happen that sometimes when I would unlock some of the other devices, you get that little spinning icon, doesn't seem to be happening here. So the optimization with the 12T Pro with the ROM currently as is, does seem to be very good. It's really quick and snappy what you want in a phone like this. The phone does come with an Android security patch level of July. I hope they can update this. My model here does have the latest firmware at the time of this video, and I have 256 gigabytes of storage. So you get a lot of this bloatware, Spotify, TikTok, and all sorts of other rubbish that uh, you probably don't want but it's there. Why is it there? Well, that's because Xiaomi's made deals with these companies. They pay a little bit of money to have their application on the phone as soon as you turn it on. And I just hope that they tone down a little bit on this because it's a bit excessive, almost three gigabytes worth of bloat applications. I do love it when I get new phones and they run a very just bare minimum set of apps and you install what you want, not having it forced upon you like it is here a little bit. So we do have a wide vine security level one cert for DRM. So this means that Amazon Prime Video is, yes, actually I've tested it in HD and Full HD, Netflix and Full HD, really good. It doesn't always happen, even though they've got the cert, it seems to be working well this time around. Camera two API support, level three. So if you want to use open camera, Gcam ports with that 200 megapixel camera, you can do so because we've got the full level of support, which is good. Now the storage, UFS 3.1, 256 gigabytes worth. Very quick, you can see that these speeds are excellent. Look at that sequential read speed and the writes. Wow, really fast. And this, random writes. So installation of applications is very quick and very seamless, and that is great. So Geekbench 5 score here, you can run this on your own phone to compare. That's why I'm showing you these that, well, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, very quick chip. Gets over a million points here with AND22. This is version 9.4. Uh, it does say that it's a not a validated score online. I don't know why that's happening. It's a bit of a glitch. But you can see it did get a little hot and I lost 5% battery just from that single test there. So here you can see what I just mentioned before that yes, it runs full HD, Netflix. Really good to see that. And unfortunately, I tried to run 3 Mark's stress test. That goes for 20 minutes. It would not complete it. It failed at about the 10, I think it was, or 12 minute mark, overheated. Not good to see this. So Xiaomi does actually need to throttle this hot Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip a little bit more because of this. So if you play a very demanding game, chances are after about 30 minutes or so, you might get this message. Not good to see at all. So we have uh, audio is just checking too, 96 kilobits per second. Still, what is going on Xiaomi? There was a point where we're getting 320 kilobits per second with their flagship devices, but they're falling behind again. Charge time, blazing fast. Now this is using the boost mode with 120 watts. There's a little option you can select to speed it up even more. And it only took 17 minutes to go from 9% to 100. 
Wow, that's crazy quick. And yes, the power supply was hot. Yes, the phone did get relatively hot, but not as hot as it does when you game. And then battery life. So this is the fixed test. It's all calibrated, the screen 200 minutes of brightness. Just let it run at 120 hertz. Gave me this 11 hour score. So real world use, you're looking about seven and a half, possibly eight hours out of the 5,000 milliamp hour battery. But mind you, that is with good signal strength. That's using 200 nits of brightness only. And it was normally light task. So if you do any gaming, you're probably going to half that battery run time if you game, especially with a bright screen. I'll speak a test now. So we've got the Harman Kardon tune speakers down with firing here and then up the top. They do sound very good as you'll hear from the sample. So they're loud, they're clear. And when I went into YouTube, it automatically turned on Dolby Atmos as well, just to help improve the quality. So here is a sample of one of my videos, the audio, it'll be at 100% and you'll hear from this sample that they're pretty good. Gaming performance with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is very good as you'd expect. Now very smooth and fluid here with Genshin Impact on the top settings. So I'm running it at the highest settings and then 60 frames per second. Now if you go into Game Turbo, you can see it's at 60 frames per second. It was at one point down to 30. So it will dip at times. Now if you do intend to run a very demanding game like this one on the highest possible settings, it will get very hot the back of the phone and after about 20 or so minutes of gaming you could run into it completely just crashing out overheating that message that I showed you before and it will boot you out of the game completely and you can't even depending on the game it is you're gonna of course lose your place so if you're playing PUBG a lighter game or Call of Duty it won't actually happen now for this game you do need to run it eventually on lower settings so running on highest at 60 frames per second it's going to overheat after about 30 minutes so I recommend running it just on the high setting and it's a really pleasant experience it is super smooth right now and that's on highest so when you drop the settings down a little it is going to be even smoother and then you don't run that risk of overheating but it's still to me unacceptable to have any game overheat be booted out of it because it just simply gets too hot the phone the Xiaomi 12T Pro and the camera, so the video quality front-facing vlog footage is just 1080p. We've got a 96 kilobit per second audio bit rate, so that's sad to see. They need to fix this. Rear footage does look really good. Video, so you can shoot 4K, 30, 4K, 60, 8K, 24. It does have decent quality. And then the 200 megapixel camera. It can take some excellent shots. Now, I do have an in-depth camera review where I go into a lot more detail. I show you the camera app, a lot more samples. So do check that out. And a camera comparison with the 12T Pro versus the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now the 12T Pro certainly ticks a lot of boxes. There's a lot of areas that I like about this phone. Great screen, it's very bright, good in-screen fingerprint reader. We have decent performance from it, beyond decent in fact, very fast and snappy, fluid. It's great, however, if you play some of those really demanding games like Genshin Impact, top setting, 60 frames per second with the case on it, you play for long extended periods, you may be in for a bit of a surprise here that Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 will overheat. It has been overheating here with my demanding tests that I've been putting it through. It cannot complete the wildlife, 3D Mark wildlife stress test, the extended one that goes for 20 minutes, can't even finish it because it will overheat. Now that's not good to see. Xiaomi needs to issue a firmware update to just throttle that chip down a lot more, similar to what other manufacturers are doing, like Samsung for example. They end up throttling these chips a lot, but at least you can still game. You're losing some of the performance, doesn't get as hot, but it won't boot you out of a game. So I guess that's what really we need in the end here with this chipset. So it charges in a blazing fast time, around 16, 17 minutes to fully charge it is nothing short of amazing. Yes, it gets hot, but it is controlled apparently with a lot of different sensors. They're checking the thermals of the battery life. It is safe there, so that's good. And it is a, a bit larger and chunkier, the charger. Now the 200 megapixel main camera, is it something you should go for? Should I 
get that 108 megapixel sensor or the 50 megapixel one. Oh, 200 megapixels must be better, right? So far from what I'm seeing, it's looking like a good sensor. It can take some very detailed photos, but it's one of those things that's nice to have, especially if you like cropping into your photos a lot, but it's something that you don't actually really need. And compared to other cameras, camera, camera systems out there, other phones, other flagships, it's not really so far from what I'm seeing getting a huge advantage or any advantage if that. It's similar kind of photos out of all of the flagships really we're getting. Where it is a bit of a letdown is the ultra wide. Eight megapixels, looks a little bit blurry, can only shoot 1080p video. Front facing camera, still 1080p video. Audio bit rates, only 96 kilobits per second. Yada, 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 I'm a broken record. I'm mentioning these same things, no video out. All these things that Xiaomi just never seems to want to fix for some reason. I hope if they do watch my videos that they take this into account. Maybe in the next generation, the Xiaomi 13, end of this year, beginning of next, they give us a 4K with a front facing camera, video out, improve the audio bit rate. Lots of those things are just software only, so they could actually fix and correct them, which I hope they do. So overall, it is a very solid offering here. It's not quite, I feel, up to that of the 12 Pro. The 12 Pro has the metal frame around the outside, it's got a better ultra wide camera, even though it has a curved screen, it's a nicer, higher quality screen. It is, I feel, still a better phone, but the 12T Pro is a nice alternative for those that are looking for something with this kind of spec and that charging rate and even maybe the gimmicky 200 megapixel camera, which is still a good camera. So thanks a lot for watching my review here of the 12T Pro.